All right, welcome back to another video. Today, I actually want to talk about something for new Linux users more specifically, but also, you know, people who have been using Linux for a while, but want to start jumping into like window managers and having their own configuration, want to talk about what the best way to go about it is. A lot of people would say, go straight into, you know, pick which window manager you want, whether it's Hyperland, whether it's Neary, whether it's DWM, what, whatever you want, and then, you know, build it and configure it from scratch and make it your own and get it exactly the way you want it. A lot of times that is really daunting for a newer Linux user or someone who just doesn't have as much experience with building your own configuration. And that's kind of me when I first started getting into window managers, which may come to a surprise because I'd been doing, you know, Linux videos and stuff for a while now, but I don't have all the knowledge in the world and I have to resort to different things to, to help me get my configuration the way I want it. Reading a lot of documentation and, you know, just taking things from other people's configs and stuff like that. So, so a lot of times, a lot of new users see great configurations and everything, and then they want to have something either similar or build, build their own, but they just don't have the know-how to do so. So what I ended up doing was installing someone else's configuration, which I've done plenty of times in the past, if you've seen my previous videos, but what I ended up doing was actually forking it and then building from that to be my own configuration. And I think that is a great way to start building your own, but having a, you know, base to start with. So my suggestion is go out and find a configuration that fits your needs the best for whatever window manager or desktop environment you are looking for. From that configuration, you can start building your own. I ended up building my own on a configuration that I found. It was Zany OS by Tyler Kelly. I had switched to NixOS maybe about a month, a uh, month and a half ago, and everything was new to me. <laughs> I didn't understand any of it. And the Zany OS caught my eye and it was the best option for me. It already had Hyperland. I had a lot of things that I like already configured, but there were some things that just weren't my taste or style. So what I ended up doing was I ended up forking their repo and GitLab which isn't a hard thing to do, but in doing so, now I can configure everything exactly the way I want it. I can delete a bunch of stuff that I didn't want out of the configuration and start setting things up to be exactly the way I want it. So when I have a new computer or another desktop and I want to install this on, it's exactly the way I want it. I can install it. I don't have to reconfigure anything. I can change all the key bindings to the things that I want. I can change everything to be exactly the way I want it. Having it in a GitLab or GitHub repo makes it easy to make changes, revert things if you need to. So you can kind of go through that whole, you know, journey of building your own, and then you can share it with other people if you want. So I ended up creating the option for other people to be able to download my actual dot files in my configuration. Yes, it is on Nix, so you would have to be using NixOS to use it, but you're, you're able to, you know, install it on your system. And then maybe you, maybe you want to fork it and start using it for your own. I had five people already fork my configuration that I just created. They're probably building it to fit their needs and changing things that they don't like from what I had. That's perfectly fine. That's the beauty of Linux. I just wanted to share that kind of journey that I've been through because I have been bouncing between different dot files and trying to find that perfect fit for my workflow. I don't think you're ever going to find it searching through other people's configurations. They built it for themselves and then just shared it with other people. So they're going to have exactly what they want in their configuration, but it's not going to be tailor-made for you. A great way to get around that is to find the one that fits closest and then tear it apart and put it back together the way you want it. At least you have a structure and something to stand on so you can actually use the desktop out the gate, make sure it's, you know, something that is, you know, usable for, for your workflow, for your day-to-day -day usage. But as you go, you can just start building. So I've been changing things pretty much every day in my configuration and then building it up to exactly the way I want things to be. That, that's my suggestion for newcomers to get your own configuration. I was able to create different hosts for my system and installed Neary, started configuring that on here as well. This one's actually on my Hyperland configuration right now. You have the ability to change everything that you want and get it built exactly the way you want. You can do it at your own pace. So you don't have to worry about your computer not working because you downloaded someone else's that already got most of the muscle work out of the way. And then you can just start changing things little by little and doing things the way you want. Maybe I could do a 
more extensive video on how to fork someone else's configuration and how to actually get that process started. But I wanted to put that out there as something that a lot of new users should do and not be afraid to do. These configurations are out there and they're available to fork. You don't have to just use theirs. I've been on the my Linux for work one, uh, I've been on N4, I've been on HiDE, I've been on all of them. A lot of times what happens is as soon as they do an update um, to something and then you update your configuration or update to their latest dot files, sometimes it breaks something that you have, like if you've installed a new theme or they use like paywall or something and their update will completely you know, erase or change a lot of the things that happened to me on a Marchie as well, just the way they had things configured. You will have your whole thing set up and then you do an update and not realize that the dot files were also updating within that <laughs> update or something was changing. And then you're spending your day trying to reconfigure and get things back the way you want it. My suggestion is if you find one that you really do like, fork it so you can keep it exactly the way you want it and not have to update through their system anymore. And then you can start your own. And um, that's where you can make your own updates and do everything exactly the way you want to do it and not have to worry about everything else that comes with trying to maintain someone else's dot files because that can be quite a lot more work than what it's worth so yeah definitely let me know in the comments below if this is something that you'd be considered doing or something that you might want more insight because i can do some more videos on on how to actually get your own configuration running this is just you know a quick suggestion for those out there that want to do it but just didn't know how to get into it or where to start so that's my quick talk for today. If you have been joining my content, please consider, you know, liking and subscribing. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.